we just finished posting our line art jumbles, so now we're moving on to unit three. Because I'm just introducing it here, I'm going to go ahead and use the unit module link from the homepage. And this is going to be our introductory exercise to vector shapes. Vector shapes are very different than raster imaging. Raster imaging is pixel-based. Vector shapes are not pixel-based. So one common place we see imagery that are vectors are emojis. You can do emojis in a text message on your phone, and you'll see that sometimes those emojis can be the size of the width of the phone, right? or even the size of a computer screen. And often they're, they're shrunken to be small enough to fit within text sizes. That's because both typefaces and emojis are all vector shapes, which means from one file, they can be outputted at any dimension and be equally clean at any dimension. And these are some past student examples, but what you can see is that these are very much like layering up of shapes. And so the way I want us to think about vectors as we're getting to learn them is like they're just cutouts of construction paper. And those cutouts can be layered in different ways. So you have like white paper on the bottom, and then some brown paper, and then some black paper, and then some pink paper, and that's the illusion you get. And so in that way, it is similar to compositing. It's just based on shapes rather than on lines. We're going to learn and basically continue to learn how to modify and transform but this time using shape tools that we keep as smart objects. We're never going to rasterize in this project. So everything's going to be a vector shape, which means that at any time we can say, we don't want it to be 8 by 10 anymore. We want it to be 60 inches by 120 inches. And it will be, and it'll be perfectly clean, as long as we never rasterize. And the only deliverable for this is shape composition. We're also going to learn a little bit more about layer effects so that we can do things like add internal shadows, drop shadows, highlights, to these very simple vector shapes that are single color, but then when we add effects to them, all of a sudden they're textured, they're, they're lit, they're more dynamic. Okay, so some past examples. We're gonna start, and actually the only thing that's required by next class is we're going to use a website called Emoji Maker. It has a few more things to it. It's just a really basic interface where you're going to make something. And you're not going to get that many options, right? It's just kind of picking and choosing from a sticker sheet of an emoji. And then we're going to, starting next class, recreate that emoji in Photopea with vector shapes. And I show this because we can also edit it heavily and change it. <laughs> a lot from the, the sketch we bring in. And we can keep it pretty simple or we can make it pretty pretty complex. Right? And these sometimes make it into the final portfolio. These different emojis. Before we did emojis, we would take digital compositions that we liked, so this was not by the student, and we would recreate them with shapes, right? which is also a fun way to practice this. But depending on the digital image you choose, it might be a lot more work than you're ready for in an exercise. So emojis kind of limit the ambition a little bit so that you can get it done on time. But this is a really great example of how to make things into vectors, <laughs> you know, just turn things into clean shapes. And then vectors, even though they're like cutouts of construction paper, you can fill that shape with gradients, with texture, once you have them cleanly cut out. So on and on and on. From Picasso to Animal Crossing to <laughs> everything in between. I like this one because sometimes the best vectors are kind of the most simplified version of communicating. So we don't always need to capture every detail to have it be effective as a vector shape. All right, let's get into the project. As always, I have a link to our YouTubes. If you just look for exercise two, like I started it for our morning class, it's there under Adobe, but you'll see it in past semesters as well. 
if you're looking, want to look ahead to what we're doing, you know, this is from spring 2022. And how many videos did it take? It took seven to get to this end result. And this was for a Kurt Vonnegut band book called Cat's Cradle. All right. So now we've been introduced to it. We can get to this page just under assignments for where you post exercise two. Just like with exercise one, it will give you a step by step. But this is again starting with the idea of the band book that you chose. So here you could start with the cartoon you chose or whatever inspiration. What kind of emoji would you want to make? Now, I started by wanting to do a, a cartoon line art jumble of Get Fuzzy, which has a really fun character named Bucky, who's a Siamese cat. Right? But I couldn't find enough black and white line art that wasn't just contained in lots of lots of uh, comic panels. So I, I switched to Felix the cat. But I might do an emoji of Bucky. I might do an emoji of, of Felix the cat. I might do an emoji of something else, right? Felix the cat is already almost an emoji. So that might be fun to do. So I have to decide. And why don't I do this at this point? I'm going to take an image of both of them. And this will be my inspiration reference. It doesn't matter how big it is, so as long as it's visible. I'm going to drag it onto my desktop. And then I'm going to show you this tool where we start, get it started. I feel like Felix the Cat has already done this job for me. Especially with figures like this and images like this. So I might try to do this kind of version to Bucky. I don't know. We'll see. And this is actually a really great example. Just these two images. So that's done with can be easily recreated with flat vectors. This isn't a vector because this is on a Google image search, so we can see the pixels, right? But it could have started as a vector. But this is a 3D vinyl doll, right? And it's trying to match it exactly in proportion, but just because it's 3D, this gives us the kind of drop shadows, the kind of glows. This is the kind of thing we can add on to our vector once we know how, with layer styles, which will be a lot of fun. And that's kind of our bonus finishing of this project. Oops, I put them in the wrong place. Also, it's a good time to start a new folder. We finished exercise one. I have the PSD file, I have the color file, I have the black and white file, I have the online files that I put to Canvas. I have the reference images, including my color references. So now it's time to close up that file and change it from being yellow to being green. All finished. And if I want to get rid of the, the desktop icon for it, I can go to Get Info, just click on that thumbnail, and just hit Delete. And that will bring it back to a regular folder. Now I want to start a new folder. Exercise number two. And we're starting to work on it now. Yellow. And this is my inspiration reference. Let's throw it in there. All right, now I'm just going to keep that open a little bit. If you want to see your reference a little bit bigger, this is going to be helpful when we're compositing landscapes and creatures. You can go to the Finder options within your folder. Go to View Options. And that's where you can make your icon size just preview a little bit bigger. And then View by Name, and it will fit it all within the window, and then I can collapse the space between them. And so now I have a nice little kind of inspiration board without even having to open a program, which can be helpful. All right, let's get back to the directions for what we're doing next. So, next, 
we can use Chrome or Firefox, right? I'm going to use Chrome, and we're going to click on this link. This is a simple uh, click and drag. Actually, you don't even drag. You just click. Custom emoji creator. And it will start with one, like I can refresh it. It'll just give you random ones. But all of these are just different backgrounds with different eyes, different mouths, different attributes layered up in different ways. So the first thing I want to do is just get to a really basic one. And the most basic one is when you first load the site, it will be this. And then we have to go and we have to clear them. So first of all, its base from what we see is the yellow circle. What base might I want? It looks like maybe the one that looks a little like a cat. Right? It's not the right color, but it's got the ears. If I want the right color, I can scroll through. There isn't any white. I could use like a gray. That gets me close. So this is not going to be your final emoji. This is just a way of starting, like sketching for it. So I'm going to use the one that has the cat ears. And then, let's see, I go to eyes. And I have to turn off the eyes they've already chosen. You'll see that they're dark gray. So if you just click on that, that turns them off. You'll see more eye options than background options. And what's nice about everything other than the background is you can use as many as you want. So you can layer them up on top of each other. So for instance, I can use this white for the eyes, but then use this for the fill, right? But I don't get to choose where they go. And that's because vectors feel very limiting sometimes. We're, that's why we're not going to be using this as our final. This is just how we get started. And then we can adjust it and make everything our own. So let's see. For Bucky, he has big white eyes. Maybe something like this. There we go. Because they're big and white. But he doesn't look that sympathetic. He has beady little insides to his eyes. Kind of like that. Or this. Kind of like that. Now, also remember how I want you to think of vectors as cutting out paper and then putting those shapes on top of each other? So it, it depends when you click on something. And they'll layer up. So the last thing you click on is going to go on top of the pile. And then if you want to turn something off, you can. It will disappear. So I'm layering up a lot of white eyes here as a way to get started. Kind of like those. They look demonic and scary. Try to turn off the lopsided ones. Okay, so maybe something like that, as weird as that looks. Next, the mouth. Let's turn off the mouth they've given us. There's a lot of mouth options. The one that's dark gray. And might as well go to the accessories and turn off the, the one they gave us. Okay, so now, <clears throat> building from the mouth. Felix has a big smile. Bucky doesn't really have a smile. Instead, Bucky's a little bit more like this. But he also has like a bit of a snout. So let's see if there's something that can kind of work for that. There's also these teeth. But now that looks a little too happy. Do we want to throw a little tongue in there? Maybe. We'll see. All right. Attributes. I've got the ears. He's got whiskers.